We just bought this brand new 2004 Corvette Z06. It's a beautiful car, but there's just one problem. It doesn't run. This is Sam. He's one of our actual subscribers. Now he's never seen this car before, but if he can get it fully up and running in the next 90 minutes, he can keep it. Along the way, we'll let you know what's going on in Sam's head so you can think like a mechanic and have the skills to take on a problem like this on your own. <sighs> These things just do not want to go in. Oh my God. Ah! What's gonna happen? I don't know what do I look like. A future man? Oh, 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 oh. This is definitely by far the most stressful thing I've ever done. Nolan, start the clock! Go! Like he's in it. Mm. Oh, dang, ran into your first problem. I need keys! Sam, I got you, man. Oh, gosh. We got your key right here. It's a little heavy. Jerry, would you do the honors? All right. What the hell? <laughs> is that <laughs> it's actual ice? <laughs> What am I allowed to use? Anything. There's like some chisels in there, some hammers oh, right that's there. That's what I needed. Bash it up. <laughs> <laughs> you want some goggles? <laughs> oh man, he's really getting in there. So we've done six sabotages that keep Sam from starting this car and having it run right. Five of them are mechanical issues that any mechanic might run into with a car. But the first one, Keys in a block of ice. Sam, 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 Sam. How deep is this thing? All right, don't hammer the key. Don't hammer the key. You're getting close. Hey! It's a little wet. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> hey, he's in. Hey! Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thanks for watching this video and everything else I've done it. Okay. Oh, weird, it doesn't That's start. That's nothing, that's crazy. It's like, I wonder why they even try and start it the first time. Let's get under the hood. I think we have a power problem. Did it not pop? It, it's, it's a Corvette. Oh, it's a front. You never, oh. you never mess with a Corvette? No, I really haven't, actually. Oh. See, dude, it's a race car. This car won Le Mans, dude. 80 minutes remain. Could I get a multimeter? Multimeter. Multimeter. Yeah. Multimeter. 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 Every tool and part that Sam needs to fix this Corvette is here in this garage. And if he asks for any tool or part, we will give it to him. But if he asks for the wrong part, we're gonna dock him time. There you go, that's the highest quality multimeter we got. The 99 cent <laughs> Harbor Freight Special. The multimeter is able to test amperages, voltages, and basically find out if the battery has power. And once we know if the battery has power, then we can kind of go down the line and figure out what else doesn't have power. Um, this is showing a good old four volts. Okay, four volts. Um, How much is a battery supposed to have? 12.6. Yeah. So 12. I think I need a battery. But if you ask for the wrong part, we're gonna dock in time. First fix, battery. Oh. 10 minutes in and Sam is making great progress. Already figured out two sabotages. Oh. Sam, how are you feeling so far? I'm feeling good. Are you, are you, are you sweating yet? <sighs> Just a little bit. Oh. The only 10 we had. It's good I was done with that one. We should make a tools are pain shirt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my next step is to see if now it'll start, which I'm gonna seriously doubt it, but you know, we'll try. Give it a shot. Oh, no, that's all we did, the ice and the battery. Just yeah. the ice and the battery? Okay. <laughs> Okay. Well, it turns over. That's a good thing. So we didn't put cement in there like I wanted. <laughs> What's your next step there? If it doesn't start, it's either missing fuel or spark. So what I'm doing right now is on newer fuel injected cars, there is a straighter valve. I see fuel, so that's probably a good thing. If you attach a fuel gauge, a fuel pressure gauge up to this, you can get uh, fuel pressure off of it and you know if your fuel pump is pumping, which would be a good thing. So, okay. just turn the thing on. We got fuel pressure, you can cut it. So, we have between 60 and 50 PSI of fuel pressure, which means fuel pressure exists. Fuel pressure exists, birds do not. <laughs> <laughs> so, that means at least we're getting fuel to the, whew. Making a mess out here. I know we're getting fuel pressure to the fuel rails, um, doesn't mean we're getting to the injectors yet, but I'm doubting that 
You guys somehow unplugged like a ECU or something like that. Um, I do need to check for spark though. So I want to check spark. Can I use a tool I brought? He brought a tool? He brought his own tool. Can I use this? Yeah, spark I say go yeah, for yeah, it. Hell yeah. As long as you explain how it works. So all I have to do is clamp this onto a ground on the engine plug your spark wire in here and I start the car and if I boop, boop, boop. New contestant achievement unlocked. Yeah. Sam oh. brought his own Wait. tool. I found what? a problem. Oh, what's that? Um, it appears the spark plug wires are cut. What? Are they all cut? It was like that when we got it. Oh, was it? No. Why would someone do that? Almost looks like some scissors or a knife. I need a spark plug wire. Sam needs a spark plug wire. I need a spark wire. plug wire. As requested, a single spark plug wire. When you say single like that, it makes me feel like there's more. So Sam asked for a new spark plug wire, which I gave him. The problem is, there's actually two oh bad boy. spark plug wires. All this stuff might seem a little gamified for you viewers at home, but if you buy somebody else's project that's not running and you take it home, you have no idea what you're gonna find. You might pop open the hood, yeah, some of the spark plug wires are gonna be cut. There's crazy people out there that do crazy stuff all the time. My parents left me at a playground for eight months. <laughs> 69 minute warning, 69, 69 minutes. minute warning. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, Woo. nice. Woo. So I'm getting spark. I'm at least getting fuel to the fuel injectors. And that leaves it a bit of air. Uh, leaves air. It does leave air. So it could either be a mass airflow sensor or a crankshaft sensor or something that would keep it from starting. Um, how do you get to that? Um, do you have to pull this whole thing off to... Um, Sam's going down a bit of a spiral here. It's pretty common on this show. You're under a lot of pressure. You want to get this car. So you start checking stuff that is a little too complex outside of the box for us to want to do. Um, um, checking for the throttle body to make sure it's activating. Could be the mass airflow sensor. Oh my gosh, thank you. He's diving too deep. There's some other simple stuff he could be checking that would get him a little further than what's going on now. The crankshaft's down by the starter. It's in the worst place ever, so it would be a risk if I go all, if I lift this whole thing up just under there and it's working just fine, but. Um. Let's lift it, let's get it up. Let's get up on some stands. We need a jack. A little bit more. Perfect. There. Sam's gonna get the car up on jacks and we are gonna pause the clock while he does that. We don't want anybody rushing around, creating a dangerous situation. Safety first. Look at the squeaky jack. They have been zero sabotages that we've done that require him to jack the car up. So hopefully he figures that out quick. He doesn't waste a bunch of time because this would suck if this was the reason he didn't win the car. Safely in the air. You're good to go. Let's get a flashlight. It's dark under there. Oh, I'm not really an OS guy, but like, I think this crankshaft position sensor should be right above the starter. I just don't even see one, but. 60 minute warning. I also don't see a connector for one either. Let me make sure before I call this out. Because if you call for the wrong thing, you lose 10 minutes. I know. Uh. You know what? I'm gonna ask for it. I'm gonna get official. I'm gonna ask for a crank position sensor. And officially, I have to dock you 10 minutes. Ah. No one! No one! Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Not often are we rooting against people, but I want this car bad. The he's, Florida he's man. He's literally in me. shopping right now. <laughs> so Sam started with 90 minutes, but he's burning through it pretty quick. But don't worry. Later on, he is going to have the opportunity to win back sometime, either with mechanical know-how or basic donut knowledge. That's right. Every contestant in this series is a real donut subscriber. So if you want the chance to maybe win a car of your own, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Study up. Do you guys have a code reader I can use? Yes. Yes. You got to find uh, it, though. Colder. Colder. Warmer. Hot. Turning on any power to it. Is it possible this one doesn't work? Actually, no, that confirmed works. Um, Why am I not getting anything to it? Nothing looks unplugged. Sam asked us for an OBD2 scanner so we could scan for any codes or check engine lights. It's a good move, that's smart. But 
Got a little trick up our sleeves. <laughs> this is dirty, dude. It's so mean. Okay, so have you ever heard of fuses? <laughs> a fuse is a little protector of electrical circuits. We pulled the fuse that makes the OBD2 sensor work. So right now he's like, does this, does this diagnostic scanner even work? It does, but the socket doesn't. That would throw me for a loop. I wish I knew these cars a little better. 45 minutes, 45 minutes. Is there an owner's manual in here? An owner's manual? Whoa, we've never had anyone use an owner's manual before. <laughs> so I'm checking for some fuses that are on here. I'm just gonna check for continuity on them. You know, sometimes the answer is just right in front of you. <laughs> well, I found a 10 amp fuse uh -huh. that is blown. Blown? Why? It's blown. A blown fuse that controls the OBD2 diagnostic port. Can I get a fuse? Yeah! yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> Woo! That's Sabotage 3. Three left. Hey, the OBD2 reader started up. Look at that! Woo! Whoa! Code reader! Woo! Okay, I'm gonna try starting it. I'm turning her over. Uh -oh. I'm gonna try uh -oh. starting it. Just a reminder, not only do you have to get this car started, you have to get it up and running right. That means no choppy idle, no engine codes. Okay, heard. Running, running. right. Hmm. Oh, damn. Stop the clock! Stop the clock, stop work. We are about halfway done with time and Sam, you have fixed three out of the six components wrong with this Corvette. And that means it's time for the Borla Halftime Challenge. All right, Sam, we are gonna give you 30 minutes access to the lift. Going up, going up. And Jeremiah's help to install this brand new Borla exhaust system made specifically for this Corvette. If you succeed, we'll add another 20 minutes to the clock. Are you down? Yeah. Hell yeah. That's what I like to hear. Your 30 minutes starts now. Woo! Holy moly. When you choose Borla, you're not just purchasing an exhaust system. You are investing in a personalized driving experience. I'm talking sound performance, and even exhaust tips. Okay, watch your head. Every aspect is designed to set you apart from the crowd. And lucky for these guys, there's no cutting or welding required. There you go. Nice. 14 minutes remaining in the Borla Halftime Challenge. Borla's direct fit systems are designed to bolt on seamlessly for a hassle-free upgrade. Once it's done, you'll immediately notice the sound balance that separates Borla from the rest. Loud and proud when you want it, quiet and refined when you need it. And most importantly, no drone whatsoever, period. And Borla makes bolt-on exhaust systems for all kinds of applications. They all sound great. Stock exhaust. Borla. Exhaust. That's it. Done. Good stuff. Should have worn gloves. I should have worn gloves. <laughs> Dude, that's a wet slap, man. And the best part is that Borla is proudly made in the USA and they back their quality with a million mile warranty. Nice. Upgrade your driving experience and give your car the Borla it deserves today by clicking the link in the description below. All right, Sam, congratulations, you got the Borla on. We are adding 20 minutes to the clock, giving you a total of 54 minutes, six seconds. You are through three of the six sabotages. The clock starts now. Get back to work. Okay, I'm gonna run some codes. Run some codes. We're gonna codes. run some codes. Run, run some, codes. some codes. Loading scanner. <laughs> codes found, one. Lost communication with throttle Actuator control module. I don't know what that means. Um, that would either be the pedal or the actual actuator. Actuator. Uh... Did you f the throttle? No. So the codes is from the battery then. Hmm. That might have been from me unplugging it though. So. Mm -hmm. Or possibly from replacing the battery. Um, from replacing the battery. 
Is there a reset that I have to do with the throttle position sensor? I don't know. I don't know nothing. Oh, what is that? I think I just found something. Uh oh, what'd you find? I might have found a vacuum line that is cut in half. I wonder who did that one. <laughs> Don't know. Ah, look at that. Uh, I think I need a vacuum line. Ding 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 ding. An important part of an engine is the amount of air that it's sucking in, so that you have a proper air fuel mixture, and the car runs efficiently, makes good power, and idles well. Everything in between. There you go. Oh. <laughs> That's a little one. Vacuum line. Vacuum line. So if you have an air leak, a vacuum leak, extra air gets into your engine, that'll make the car run pretty badly. So we've created three vacuum leaks on this Corvette. First, we loosened the crankcase ventilation hose. Second, we removed the brake booster hose to the intake manifold. And third, we loosened the entire intake manifold. With those three vacuum leaks, the car may start, but it's not gonna run very well. And that's the whole thing here. This car has to run flawlessly for Sam to be able to drive it out of here. I don't, know, I don't think it's gonna start, but I'm just gonna try just in case. I didn't know this thing was a diesel. Now, a vacuum line, that'd be part of the reason it's running rough, but I don't think that's the reason that the throttle activator is not running. That'd be more of a vacuum leak problem. Sam's repeating some mistakes he made before. Now, one of the first things he found out that was bad was a spark plug wire, so he only changed one of those. Turns out there were two of them that were bad. Now he found a vacuum leak, thought that might be a solution to his problem. He is getting a little bit further along, but still in that same situation of not going through every component in the intake system to make sure that it's sealed up. And he better get freaking moving or else I'm driving the sucker straight home 32 minutes and that thing sounds like total dog <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> So that's crank, that's air. Yep. What else? And fuel. All right, how's fuel looking? Well, I checked fuel pressure earlier. Okay, just because you got pressure. Doesn't mean I have injector. I have an OL. I wonder what that means. I bet you OL doesn't mean something good. I don't know what OL means. Let me go check some fuses for a uh, for a fuel system problem. How many fuses are you gonna check today? He's on the right path, but he's letting other things distract him. He keeps going back to fuses. I don't see anything unplugged, but I'll double check. Wait, there's a lot of tape on these. Why would you guys put so much tape on here? Does all the injectors usually have this much electrical tape all over the top of it? Uh, I, mean, I don't know. I don't think the GM factory guys like electrical tape on fuel injectors. Wait, is this the intake coming off? Oh. Oh my god. Does this whole intake manifold need to come off? Uh -huh. You tell me, man. I was trying to get the fuel injectors and all of a sudden the intake manifold tried coming off. Oh. The whole thing. And so like generally do you want that to be like tight to the end? Generally, yeah. That would definitely cause a big old vacuum leak. Thank you. <laughs> That's the second vacuum leak you found by chance. That is the second vacuum leak. Uh, crank me. That's fuel injectors. It's not firing. This one right here is not firing. Cylinder two. Let me get the other side. I have three on this side that are not firing. So I think I'm gonna need some fuel injectors. Fuel injectors! We got about 20 minutes left. Sam figured out that the fuel injectors were bad, so he's putting those in. But I have a feeling there's still something wrong with the car. I'm getting all the injectors in a place where they're gonna seat, and then I'm just gonna do this. Come on. Uh, these things just do not want to go in. I can't get them seated correctly, and I am not 100% sure why. Oh my gosh, that one's on, that one's ready. Okay, I'm gonna try to start this thing. All right, here we go. Wait, there's a, wait one second, there's a lot of fuel in here. Don't worry guys, if there's a fire, Whoa! I got Jimmy. You wanna try it? Go for it. Uh-oh. Leaky injectors. Looks like he didn't quite get the injectors seated in the fuel rail and or the intake manifold, so it's leaking bad. That's no good. Gotta fix it. Okay. 
I never had so much issues with fuel injectors in my life. Ooh. 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 We've had blood. Mm. We've obviously got sweat. Mm. Will we have any tears? Stay tuned to find out. On this oh, episode dude. of Free Ride, are you farting on I me? I tried to, because I was going to say there's definitely oh gas. All right, so we've got 10 minutes left. Sam's done a pretty good job of sussing out a lot of the sabotages that we made to the Corvette, but he hasn't gotten them all yet. He made quick work of the ice block. He also realized that the battery was bad quickly, replaced it very quickly. He got the OBD2 port fuse and replaced that so that that worked and he could scan the car with a diagnostic scanner. But then that's where the problems kind of started. So he realized pretty quickly that there was an issue with the fuel injectors, but the replacement procedure didn't go super smoothly. He got the injectors that needed to be pulled out, out pretty quickly, but they left some of their O-rings behind. He had a hard time getting them out, tried to work very quickly and get them just jammed in there, and that ended up costing him more time. Finally. I think I got them on. They are pretty seated now. Try starting it. Still not running Sounds right. Sounds like Whoa. a miss. Sounds like a miss. Six and a half minutes to find a miss. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is definitely by far the most stressful thing I've ever done. Okay, Sam. Yes. You've been doing pretty good so far. You've got a lot of things figured out. Yes. Here's the deal. There are two sabotages left. There are two, okay. You've touched on both of them already. You just haven't fixed them completely. Earlier, you did one spark plug wire. I'd like to say that you're on the right track. There might be a little more that you need to do. Heard. And the other sabotage had multiple facets to it. There's just a third one. I hear you. I hear you. So something's loose. Maybe. I would be touching them shits with your hand. Oh, I see it. I think I see it on another one. You know, this one didn't pull apart, but now it did. Yes. I need a spark plug wire. Just one? Uh. How many? Oh, I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out. Okay, so it's just asked for another part. He's got to get him in. There's one more thing to fix. Faster, there's another <laughs> thing. I know. Get on there. Oops. Ah! He lost the 10. He lost the 10 <laughs> he again? He lost the 10. Oh, for <laughs> sakes. I need a freaking wrench. Where's the wrench? One minute left. 37, 36, 35, 54, one minute left. Oh my God. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, pencils down. Oh, dude. So close. Heartbreaking. Sam. You made a valiant effort. You went down the wrong path a couple of times. You looked cool doing it, but unfortunately you didn't get it running right, so we're keeping the Corvette. I don't feel very good. <laughs> Honestly, I think I went wrong not knowing anything about the car. I've never touched a Corvette before. I was just unfamiliar with the platform. That was honestly all it was. If I had more time, I could figure it out, I'm sure, but that's the game. <laughs> I've never had to deal with heartbreak on this show. Uh, yeah, it, sucks. it sucks. I'm sorry. Come on in here, yeah! Uh, thank you guys for watching this video and everything else on Donut. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and who knows, maybe we will pick you for a chance to win a very cool car in the future. And if not, you'll be up to date on everything that we put out. We upload videos all the time. Sam, love you dude, love you guys.